Hello friends, once again welcome to Diksha Mission JRF. This is a 38th day of Diksha Mission JRF. In the past few videos or in the past 36 videos, we were discussing different topics from our NTA NET Paper 1 syllabus. We have given priority for discussing previous questions and that too, especially the latest exam that is 2019 December examination. So as of now, we have discussed most of the questions from 2019 December examination. If you are yet to watch those videos, you can subscribe to our channel, Diksha Classroom YouTube channel. You can select the playlist 2019 December uh, question paper with explanation. The remaining questions will be also uploaded soon. Okay, so in this video, we are going to discuss another topic from our paper on syllabus. Before going to the topic, don't forget about your task, task number 38. Uh, at the same time, don't forget the answer key for yesterday's task, task number 37 is given in the YouTube description. And the question paper for today's task, that is task number 38, is also given in the YouTube description. Some of our friends have told me that they face a little difficult regarding downloading the question paper from the YouTube description. If so, you can be a part of Diksha Paper 1 WhatsApp broadcast in which we will send you directly the task number or the task question papers to your WhatsApp. So as to join Paper 1 broadcast, you can send join to 9847478690 and uh, we also have free WhatsApp broadcast for Paper 2 subjects like economics, commerce, psychology, social work, etc. If you want to join those also, you can go to the YouTube description. There is a format and the phone number and the link link for joining such broadcast. At the same time, if you want to download ebooks of previous question papers, you can visit our website. And also you can visit our website for knowing more about Diksha online courses like Paper One online course, previous questions online course, etc. Okay, so in this video, we are going to discuss an important topic from higher education system. Yeah, higher education system is a very important topic. We have already discussed some topics from higher education system that is the evolution of higher education in post-independent India in which we discussed about different committees, commissions, frameworks, extra from the side of the government so as to promote higher education system and uh, research in India. So in this video, we are going to discuss another topic from higher education system that is oriental conventional and non-conventional education in india it's an important topic that has been included after the change of syllabus in 2019 uh, january onwards so in this video we'll be discussing this topic it's a simple topic okay it's a pretty simple topic so friends let's go to the topic okay so friends in this video as we have already discussed we are going to discuss oriental conventional and non-conventional learning programs in india another important topic from our higher education system so firstly we'll try to understand uh, basically what is this in this topic what is this oriental learning what is this conventional and non-conventional learning etc uh, so let's see firstly let's see what oriental learning is okay uh, we can say that uh, oriental learning is all about the study of uh, its uh, what we can say cultural aspects usually we say indology as the science of study of cultural aspects okay and oriental studies means the academic field of study that embraces near eastern and far eastern societies cultures languages peoples history and archaeology okay which means that initially when we analyze the study of the world history we can see most of the preference or predominance is given to the western history american history european history so called european history extra we can't say much emphasis on we don't have any history of the near eastern or far eastern society or as we uh, as we say southeast asia and those countries are not present or not studied well with regards to their culture language people like extra in the history so oriental studies is a new branch that that was even initiated by the western historians itself which focuses on the study of near eastern and far eastern societies and that doesn't end 
within the study of uh, societies in uh, societies they also continue with the study of cultures languages people history and archaeology so this is a oriental learning and definitely indology comes as a part of oriental learning because we know indology is a study of culture in all aspect okay uh, so uh, we have uh, this is okay this oriental learning was necessitated by the need for revamping of the knowledge because if we uh, if you look towards the world history we can have a american history we have a european history we have a south american north american history but we don't have much about the far eastern societies or eastern societies okay like southeast asia okay we don't have much studies even though it's a significant aspect of the world geographical area so oriental learning focuses on study of that aspect and uh, even though it's study about eastern and far eastern society we can say that they are initiated by the western scholars western scholars initiated the study of oriental learning okay so we can say that it's it's necessary to have such a branch of knowledge especially uh, mainly we are focusing on the asian countries okay eastern and far eastern countries are mainly coming under asia even though we have uh, asia's uh, largest uh, continent in the world when it comes to world history asia doesn't play a significant role okay whether it's a world war okay we have the involvement of japan to an extent and china also very less extent but rest all the world history is being dominated by the european and the american powers so that was a need of a revamping of knowledge with regards to eastern and far eastern society and uh, it was initiated by western scholars definitely there are many western scholars who opposed oriental studies also okay and they want the study of teaching of western education in all the countries throughout the world and these oriental studies are carried out through the establishment of different institutes across the world okay different oriental studying institute or different institute that focus on the study of eastern and far eastern countries the culture the history people etc extra were established throughout the world and this basic aim or the objective of establishment of this this institute consisted chiefly in collecting and collating rare manuscripts in the oriental languages like prakrit sanskrit extra which deals with religion philosophy literature grammar art science editing and publishing them okay and if needed uh, uh, explanatory notes or translation will be also published uh, we can just assume the history of india itself we have a rich uh, sanskrit history or sanskrit language prakrit language extra still is not being taught or still is not being studied in a large scale throughout the country okay so now we will be discussing different important institutes of oriental learning in india we have the one of the most famous as adhyar library and research center it's in chennai in adhyar and remember this is very important previously they have asked question regarding the math the following so there is not much in detail you have to study with regards to oriental conventional and non-conventional learning programs in india usually uh, these factual type of questions are being asked in the past few exams so it's very important they have previously asked math the following regarding important institutes of oriental learning in india you have the adhyar library and research center which is located in chennai then you have the Asiatic Society, the much famous Asiatic Society, which which main objective was to study more in detail regarding the history of Asia and Asian countries established by William Johns during the time of British. And it was in Kolkata, very important Asiatic Society in Kolkata. Then you have Bandarkar Oriental Research Institute. Okay, Bandarkar Oriental Research Institute, another important institute of Oriental Learning. It is located in Pune. Then you have Ganganadja Kandriya Sanskrit Vidyapit. It's located in Prayagraj in Uttar Pradesh. Okay, this is in Tamil Nadu. This is in West Bengal. This is in Maharashtra. And this is in Uttar Pradesh. Then we have fifth one as Kupuswami Shastri Research Center. Again in Chennai in Tamil Nadu. And also Madras Sanskrit College. That's also located in Chennai. Okay, so these are the first six sets of important institutes of oriental learning in india uh, now we'll be going to we'll be seeing uh, next set we have the mythic society 
which is located in Bengaluru, which is another important institute of foreign learning in India. Then you have Saraswati Mahal Library. Okay, it's a, another institute or it's a library which is dedicated to Oriental studies and books that deals with Oriental studies. So we have the Saraswati Mahal Library located in Tanchavur in Tamil Nadu. Again, we have the Oriental Manuscripts Library, another library with regards to Oriental studies, which is located at Chennai. Uh, remember chennai is a very important so sorry a place which is very important for oriental studies throughout the country then you have sanskrita sahitya parishad it's also known as sanskrita bal sahitya parishad which is located in puducherry sanskrita bal sahitya parishad located in puducherry okay then you have government sanskrit colleges and sanskrita academies uh, academy seats located in different states we have government sanskrit college in different states we have sanskrit academies also in different states so i just mentioned just to know that these are also some types of some examples for oriental institutes across the country so these 12 are so important oriental institutes in india definitely there are some more but i have discussed one of the uh, some of the most important aspect be sure you know the places where it is located where the following question can be expected so that's all about oriental learning remember it's all about studying uh, history of uh, the less studied societies less studied countries asiatic societies eastern societies far eastern societies extra so very important study of indology means study of culture and other related aspects then we have conventional learning so this is another important topic it's a it's a it's a very easy topic okay conventional and non-conventional learning there is not much to detail uh, much in detail you have to study uh, conventional learning means those mode of learning which is conventionally produ uh, provided in india so when we analyze the education system of india if i ask you which is the most common form of providing knowledge or common form of providing education we have the school or college system in which the teacher will be coming to a particular class students will be also coming to that class in stipulated time students will be sitting there teacher will be taking the classes and mainly uh, she ho, he will be utilizing the blackboard and other traditional technologies okay so this is known as conventional learning we can also say it's a traditional learning also and uh, so all those methods which are being practiced throughout the country for a long period or from the ancient time or from the past uh, uh, decades we can say they are known as conventional learning okay and it's also as i have already told it's also known as the traditional education or customary education okay so we have for conventional learning we say it as conventional education traditional education or customary education also and these are the long established customs that the society traditionally used in schools or educational system okay so in that there will be uh, in this method there will be instructors and there will be students there will be fixed patterns that will be following okay so definitely we have a lot of merits and demerits of traditional or conventional techniques also uh, merits uh, i will be discussing in detail uh, not in detail some important points regarding merits and one of the most important merit is it is cheap compared to the latest non-conventional methods we'll be discussing it in when we comes to non-conventional methods it's cheaper because a single teacher may take class to many students and there will not be much expense with related to the study materials or with related to other study utensils being or the study technologies that is being adopted by the teacher so it's comparatively cheaper and to an extent we can say better clarity will be there better clarity will be there and uh, better clarity can be there it's debatable but still uh, in some books you can see better clarity the reason why this they are saying that there is a better clarity is because uh, when you analyze the traditional methods you can say that there is a uh, direct okay direct teacher to student interaction so when there is a direct teacher to student interaction and the teacher can analyze or the observe the facial expressions of the student the emotional aspects of the students the teacher may be well known regarding whether the student is understanding what is being delivered by the teacher so that may be the reason we say better clarity can be seen the merits uh, in the traditional conventional because there is a direct uh, seeing or the teacher know regarding the student the teacher 
teacher is in the immediate vicinity of the student and the teacher can observe and directly observe and from time to time check whether the student is understanding the things that is being taken in the class and also there will be a chance for more disciplinary as aspect because uh, teacher will be there student will be there and they will be directly seeing each other and uh, if the student is doing something or uh, indisciplinary manner definitely the teacher can point out at, at the spot because all the students in conventional or traditional technology traditional uh, what we can say education system will be under the vicinity or under the control of the teacher so we can say it's cheaper it's better clarity it's more discipline extra uh, definitely there are many demerits also we are not discussing in much like we can say demerits in convention and we follow a uh, follow a generalized study that means a teacher may take a same class to 40 50 students okay so she or he may take class to 50 students and some of the students may be getting what she is being told and some is will not be getting because within the students there will be individual differences different students will be having different grasping power different intelligence different memory capacity extra so it will be difficult for the teacher to have a to provide a individual analysis or an individual attention okay it's an important demerits of a conventional system of education because the education will be the education that will be provided will be of a generalized manner okay so maybe the most of them will be most of the students will be getting what is being taught by the teacher but there will be a a, a set of students or there will be a minority of students who are not understanding who are having some learning difficulties so they will be unable to follow what is being taken in the class so these are an important okay aspect of uh, traditional or conventional uh, system of learning programs and also we need many what we can infrastructural facilities there should be many uh, all students should have to come to the teacher the teacher should wait for there will be time limitation only those times which is comfortable for all the students we can have the class okay and it should be in the only the students who are near to the school or those who are who can come to the school on a daily basis can attend the conventional system so similarly we can have a many demerits also of this conventional system of education now we are moving to the next next aspect that is the last topic it's a again it's a it's an easy aspect that's a non-conventional learning okay so we have already discussed regarding the conventional learning conventional learning is all about the traditional method in which a teacher will be coming to the class the students will be coming to the school and the teacher will be taking the class using the traditional methods like the blackboard chalk uh, notebook extra so in non-conventional learning means all methods which are not present in the conventional or which are not seen conventionally can be said as the methods of learning so we can say uh, non-conventional learning is uh, education in times other than common education because in conventional learning we'll be having a time it may be from monday to friday and the timing will be from 10 o'clock uh, to 4 o'clock so there will be a fixed time there will be a fixed day and uh, it, it may not be flexible to a great extent but uh, non-conventional method is all sort of educational process learning programs that being taken place in the time other than the common education it may be the evening classes it may be the morning classes it may be the online classes it may be the one-to-one -one tuitions okay so different methods all other methods that are being innovated in today in these days because it's very important because as per the latest studies regarding educational status and child psychology it's very important that if we have to or the teachers have to provide individual attention towards the children because as we have already said before there will be individual differences among different students the capacity memory capacity studying capacity grasping capacity intelligence capacity extra everything will be different so the teacher has to provide an individual attention okay individual learning is going to be the future mode of education so it can be provided only in non-conventional method of education and so there will be many creative way of transferring knowledge there will be digital way even as uh, knowledge may be transferred through games it may be through video games it may be through challenges and many many other forms of uh, learning may be uh, may be applied here so as to impart knowledge okay so this is known as non-conventional source of uh, uh, 
so this is known as non-conventional form of learning and this is an important aspect so and we have there are many uh, definitely we can say any specific centers with regards to non-conventional education because we have the online system we have the evening classes many online platforms okay even we are having an online session okay and also during this lockdown we have heard about different online platforms for educational all the learning programs okay so and uh, still we can say some important institutes of non-conventional learning in india we have the vasantada uh, vasantada uh, sugar institute in maharashtra which deals with alcohol technology indian astrobiology research center in mumbai which deals with astrobiology bhavnagar university deals with in rural studies indian institute of carpet technology which studies carpet technology definitely uh, we can't say these are entirely focusing on non-conventional system of education we are saying these institutes are certain institute of non-conventional learning because uh, they are teaching which is uh, those things which are normally not taught in a school like the they are not teaching the direct uh, science social mathematics extra definitely they are teaching the application of science social whatever it is but they are teaching something that is not conventionally or not traditionally taught throughout india so these are i am just saying some examples for non-conventional education okay so that's it we have studied about oriental studies it's all about studying the ontology aspect or the cultural aspect of asiatic eastern and far eastern countries then we have the conventional method or the traditional or the customary form of education then we have the latest non-conventional mode of education digital education may be set as a a mode of non-conventional education okay so that's it so friends that's all about this video discussing oriental conventional and non-conventional education system in india an important topic from higher education system i hope you are clear with the concept so far discussed they are almost simple concepts still if you have any doubts you can ask in the comment session and we'll be discussing more topics from our paper one syllabus in the coming days don't forget about your task the question paper is available in the youtube description and so as to know more about diksha online classes and so as to download materials previous questions extra visit our website www.dikshaclassroom.com make sure you have subscribed to this youtube channel diksha classroom and has clicked the bell icon so as to receive notification in time so that's all about this video friends see you tomorrow same time thank you